This is synchronicity. 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 Welcome to episode 30. Correctly got it this time. Last week I said it was episode 30, but I was crazy because I was in a baby haze. Uh, but this is actually episode 30. My guest today is Yoshino from the Artist Decoded podcast, which if you haven't checked it out, check it out. I, you know, I don't, some podcasters out there, they probably are like, hey, only listen to this podcast. It's the best podcast. And while I have great confidence in this podcast, there are so many other amazing podcasts out there, and I listen to them, and I get referred. Some of them, people tell me about them, um, notably Michael Donovan, who is always feeding me good people uh, to listen to and then potentially bring on the show. And Yoshino is one of those people. Um, so I'm going to get to Yoshino in a second. Don't worry. It's a really great episode. I know I say that every episode, but I wouldn't put it out if it wasn't great, right? That would be crappy and wouldn't reflect well on me. So I, I definitely wouldn't do that. Um, but I wanted to start with, uh, as you know, or maybe don't know, had a baby. Baby is uh, now nine days old. He just had a bris last night. If you don't know what that is, that's a circumcision in the Jewish tradition. And I just will say this. I watched the entire birth, full frontal view participated, helped, saw the whole thing. Uh, you know, I couldn't get through the breast. I had to turn away. Insane. Uh, insane that that happened to me uh, and happens to many people. Holy shit. Um, so, yeah, but I had a baby. His name is Eli. He's awesome. He's doing great. Super healthy. Alexis is doing great. I'm doing great. We're not sleeping, but we're doing great. Um, but... Do you guys know Humans of New York? Um, he, Brendan Stanton, he is uh, an awesome, awesome guy who used to go around New York exclusively and just take pictures of people, but ask them a story. And the stories and the pictures combined just created this uh, just awesome, magical experience so many times, just hearing people's you know naked stories, telling, bearing their souls often, or sometimes just something funny. It's just a genius concept, and his follow-through on it has been amazing. But recently, he's been emerging and doing kind of these very cool fundraising things. The, the first one I became aware of was the Syrian refugees fundraiser that he was doing a few months ago, which was awesome, raising money for affected families, like... If you're listening to a podcast, it's likely that you're not in a position <laughs> or even close to being a Syrian refugee. And if you are, that's fucking amazing. Um, but the truth is, is like going through a situation like that is um, it's almost unthinkable for most of us. Um, so him shedding light on that. And I think, you know, he 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 got up to like the upper levels of government where they were basically allowing people and, you know, looking at special cases because it was so you know ridiculous. Some of the bureaucracy that had gone on with the refugees and these are people, right? You're supposed to open your doors. Um, so yeah, now he's doing, and this one is where it's hitting gnome and this is what's going on. Uh, he's doing, um, the oncology, you know, children's pediatric oncology division, um, you know, children's cancer, uh, at Sloan Kettering and, oh my God, having just had a child and reading these stories, it's like, Oh my God. It's, it's heartrending for, there's no other word for it. It's really, it's, you lean into it and you read it. And I'm so incredibly grateful that he's doing this, um, really deserves a round of applause. But more importantly, I recommend checking it out because it is really just like a, a master course in dealing with humanity and what goes on around us, no matter how much we want to pretend maybe it doesn't. People get sick, people die. It's, you know, there's shit happens. Um, but he's also raising money. And I think the goal was originally a million dollars. And now it's it's been, it was last time I checked, it was like 1.3 million. Um, so go check it out. It's really cool. Um, you know, someone on Twitter, when I tweeted out that they should donate to that, wrote back and was like, this is all bullshit. You know, there's the cure for cancer. You know, this big pharma, you know, blah, blah, blah. I was like, listen, I hate big pharma as much as the next person. I don't like them. I think they're terrible, greedy, subservient to, you know, the dollar and not people's health. But... 
I do think when you read these stories, you'll realize there are a lot of dedicated and compassionate people working in that field. All right, sorry for the long cancer rant. I also want to point out, uh, I started a donation. I, I think in the first few episodes, like, I don't need the money. I don't need the donations. And while I don't need the money per se, I would like to begin to cover the costs of running the show, um, which include podcast hosting, website hosting, you know, marketing stuff like MailChimp, social media, um, ads that I'm paying for. Uh, anything you can give if you want was totally appreciated. You can go there, uh, syncpodcast.com slash donate. You'll see a button, whatever you want to do. I totally appreciate it. Now, there's a caveat to this. What I think I'm going to do, and this kind of ties in with the Humans of New York thing, I want to start doing some fundraisers. And I think I can do that prettily, prettily, pretty easily through syncpodcast.com. Um, I got a plug in. I set up a whole system where I think we can start doing some really cool fundraisers. So what I thought would be interesting is we can get like a donation pool going and I'll get it started. And then we can all collectively, listeners of the podcast and part of the community, select a charitable cause to donate a certain amount of money to. And we'll set like a very reachable goal, like, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars initially, but we'll see where it can go because I think that would be a cool way to give back and, you know, collectively direct our intention and energy via money towards causes that are important to us. So that's going to be something I'm going to be doing too. Um, Okay. Yoshino. Now, Yoshino is one of these people who I think I spoke to him cumulatively two times before we did this podcast. I listened to a couple, three episodes of his show. Um, and, you know, but immediately in speaking with him the first two times and the third time we speak is this podcast, um, you could, we were just, we hit it off. Just like a really down to earth, cool, helpful guy who just really is interested in helping people, right? The big themes that I think kind of sum up Yoshino are he really wants to be of service and provide value and is incredibly interested in forming, you know, cohesive and coherent and helpful communities. Um, And he's doing that through his podcast, Artist Decoded, which is very, very cool. Um, It's where he interviews or sometimes sets up other artists to interview each other um, about the creative process, what it's like being an artist. And I think it's fascinating for anyone who's a creative, but more importantly, as a service to kind of let people know what's going on in some of these processes and things people would go through. Um, But he's also just like a cool, let me, let me read you what his description of artist decoded is on his podcast description and definitely subscribe to it. it goes without saying he goes, I started this series as a means for exploration an exploration of self and an exploration of the perspectives of other artists. And let, let me just say this right here. Replace other artists with other people because uh, Yoshino is fundamentally interested in people. I think that is a key part of this too. He goes, this series is an unabridged documentation of conversations between artists. It's a series dedicated to breaking down the barriers we tend to set up in our own mind. I want to inspire future creatives to have the courage to explore and experiment. This is about making dreams a reality and not about letting our dreams fall to the wayside. My intention is to give my audience a sense of real human connection, something that feels rich and organic. When I was thinking of a title, I thought of the word movement. In relation to the Renaissance period and art, my goal for this program is to signify a rebirth of consciousness towards the way we look at contemporary art. So holy shit, right? That is, I mean, you can replace creatives and artists with yourself and people and it's the same stuff. And that shines through in everything that he's done. Not to mention he's a hell of a photographer. He's a hell of a visual art artist. Um, he, his, uh, it's an overused word nowadays, but his aesthetic is fucking awesome. He really like produces high quality stuff and there are embeds and links in the podcast episode for this, um, on syncpodcast.com and mindpodnetwork.com. Go check them out there. Um, and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So you don't just think I'm making it up. Um, but truthfully, like, you know, talk about, he's talking about things about eliminating barriers, being able to do the impossible, which sound kind of maybe like lofty and woo woo goals. But hey, man, uh, if you set your eye on something, or hey, woman, hey, man, or hey, woman, if you set your goal, like your eyes on a goal, like that's how things get done. I mean, 
that's how the world is changing. And listen, look at uh, Donald Trump is about to be potentially president. So if you don't think anything can happen, now there's your proof. Literally anything can happen. Um, so yeah. Oh, the other thing again, Yoshino, why he's such a awesome, he's a blessing. Listen, so he does, he mentioned, he found out from Michael Donovan that I do this thing on my phone and I highly recommend everyone do this. They does this, um, set up a reminder on your phone that says gratitude and have it go off at least once a day. And it's a nice little way to, well, there's two things it does. One, it can actually remind you to be grateful. And two, which I've also noticed is sometimes it'll go off and I'll be like, ah, who's got time to be grateful. So being able to note that you actually do that, or at least I actually do that is also a value. Um, but I really think the gratitude reminders are great. But then Yoshino recommended this app called gratitude 365. Um, and I downloaded it it's like two bucks totally worth it we're not getting paid to do this there's no we're no we're free promotion for gratitude 365 but it's a nice cool really easy way to jot down what you're grateful for throughout the day and can take a little picture and attach it to it it's pretty cool um so big thanks to him for that because it really is a game changer i'm a fundamental believer that if you can appreciate and be grateful for what you have regardless of the circumstances on some level that sets you up for a whole lot of other awesome stuff um so yeah this episode is great um rate and review this podcast on itunes stitcher wherever i appreciate it if you can do that again you're welcome to donate um i'm gonna have details on the fundraising stuff we'll be doing on synchronicity i think that's gonna be really cool and fun like that's that's gonna be cool i know it is um so yeah without further ado here is yoshino All right, awesome. Hey, nice to meet you, man. Sorry, <laughs> it's like a, an awkward uh, no worries. beginning technical issue. I, it's always some silly shit like uh, turn it off and turn it on again. Oh, dude, don't. Recording. Yeah, no worries, man. It's not. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not mad or anything. <laughs> cool. Um, how you doing? Is, is it is it cool if I take some? Uh, if I like need to get water? Or, I mean, you. Oh you'll no, be... this is a strictly no drinking water <laughs> zone. You <laughs> get yeah, totally forbidden. Yeah, of course, man. Like, there's no. Cool. I'm There's just no making bill. sure, you know, like that you cut and I don't know, whatever. The only time I ever got upset when someone was eating or drinking had nothing to do with a podcast. <clears throat> so I was taking these classes. You had to take private lessons. And yep. there's this guy and he's a really great saxophone player. But during the private lesson, he started to eat a tuna fish sandwich Ugh. and like then played saxophone. And I was like, this is like I was disgusted. And I'm like, never people eat, drink, whatever on the phone. No big deal <laughs> in front of me. I don't care. Even if it's weird. Just, and gross, what, like, the, just the idea of like tuna in the mouth with like the saxophone, like ugh, playing this instrument. It was the grossest. It was just something about it. I'll did, never, you share, I'll, did you share the saxophone with him? <laughs> No, God, Jesus Christ, thank God. No. Was, From my tuna God. mouth to your mouth. Ugh. It was just like, oh, you're blowing hot tuna air like through this horn now. Like, <laughs> ugh. it was just so, it was like the grossest thing you possibly could eat. Just to me, That's hilarious. tuna fish and saxophone don't go together. <laughs> um, exactly. Wait, I'm going to turn so, my input down a little bit. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah, totally cool. Um, and then maybe you might need to turn it up on your end. I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Yeah. You're, you're right below. Yeah. I've been rethinking about the way okay. I've been recording in to yeah. like what I used to do at the very beginning is split them into two tracks and have them go into like something like GarageBand and Logic or Ableton. Yeah, that's and, what I usually do. Uh, yeah, exactly. And then I would split them and then I would EQ them. But then I found a little trick via the Skype recorder where if you export the recorded file from the Skype recorder uh -huh. as a QuickTime file, it actually does a pretty good job of leveling it. But recently... I've been really quiet and my guest has been correct and I have to go and like edit each section out oh, That's weird. and then like EQ them. I mean, it's not the worst thing, but yeah, it's kind of a little yeah. weird. I'm trying to look for a better system. I'll so, probably so you do all your sound engineering and everything and the editing and everything? Oh yeah, 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 definitely. I, uh, that's, cool, that's what I went to school for. So, oh, that I, makes sense. Yeah. It's, it, it's easy <laughs> enough. I mean, it's one of the skills I know. <laughs> 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 I'm going to use it for as much as it's worth. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what instrument? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, saxophone. That's right. Sax, yeah. And then I... Did you uh, play anything else? Yeah, I taught myself guitar. Um, I'm like, I'm, I'm passable on guitar. I'm good at guitar. Uh, I taught myself keyboards that I'm passable on um, and bass. 
you know, basic, cool. basic, easy instruments to pick up. And then I, I used to play music too, but nothing. Probably oh, like cool. What, what did you with play? You. Um, yeah. I played drums uh, cool. and guitar and bass because guitar and bass kind of like go hand in hand. Exactly. Right. There's no one. There's no one who doesn't <laughs> play bass and plays guitar if they've been doing it long enough. That's cool, man. Exactly. I always wanted to play the drums. Um, You'd probably pick up on it pretty well. I mean, if you're musically yeah. inclined in general. Yeah, it's just one of those things where like, you know, to, to play drums, you have to have a drum kit or at least the pads and everything and like, you know, really yeah. do. And that's a commitment that I've never made. But I really, I think I probably will learn at one point because yeah. between programming and learning the other instruments, it's pretty cool. Um, of course. All right. So yeah, let's get started. It's, it's going to be easy. Don't worry. There's no, yeah, we're, man. we're going to, we're going to start. So <laughs> we're going to start with the, what you called me about last night, which is, I would love, I just thought it was such a good, you are, you called me just for our listeners benefit because we're starting. Um, you yeah. called me and you were somewhat, correct me if I'm wrong, a little bit intimidated because you listened to the podcast I did with Duncan Trussell and yeah. admittedly like, that's like, a you know, conceptually gymnastics like we're doing like he even said in the episode like he's doing intellectual and spiritual backflips you know references all exactly. these interesting concepts and you were you called me and you're like hey man like i don't know like i don't know who you think <laughs> I am, but like yeah. you know i don't really know any of these things yeah and i thought it was awesome because um i think well i love having those conversations about like these very esoteric and like you know interesting quote-unquote spiritual topics um i don't think that in any way whatsoever is necessary. And in a lot of ways, I think it can actually be a hindrance for people when you get caught up in kind of these, these very yeah. intellect, intellectualizing things that we kind of intuitively know. So I, mm -hmm. I wanted to delve into this a little bit, but I also, I got confirmation that you are very interesting. And while you probably wouldn't refer yourself to spiritual, you do have an interest in the things that I have an interest in and that I like to bring up on this podcast. I listened to your um you're on your podcast, Artist Decoded, um, where you're usually interviewing guests or you sometimes put people together, artists together to mm -hmm. interview each other. Yeah. But you had a couple episodes in there um, where it's just you talking. And one of them was the end of 2015. And I oh, listened yeah. What did you think about that? Oh, my God. I was going to say, like, this is that's what I'm talking about. Like my definition, spirituality is one of these words that's like, you know, it's been a nominalization. It, it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but technically what it means is of the spirit. And I think that gets lost a lot because people think of like spirituality and there's new age stuff and, you know, all this stuff that goes into it, or maybe yeah. you're a Buddhist or maybe you're a Hindu or whatever it is. But really it's just whatever we define as the qualities of being of the spirit. And I jotted down a few things that you mentioned just in this like 10 minute thing. Amazing, by the way, really, really, really. Thanks, man. I like to make um, those little, um, like uh, monologues every once in a while. Amazing. I Just mean, on kind of philosophies that I've been surrounding myself with and different things I've been reading. And I like a lot of things from different Greek philosophers and Seneca, you mentioned particularly yeah. that mm -hmm. one specifically. Um, yeah. I mean, you do it in a way, you know, I, my day job is working with a lot of spiritual people and teachers and businesses and organizations and not all and not many I work with, but people can kind of proselytize about that stuff, get up kind of on the pulpit and be like, this is how we do it. This is the way it's done. I thought yours was exactly what, you know, it should be, which is not coming from a place of authority necessarily, but just weaving it into your personal life yeah. and how certain concepts and things have helped you. Um, so I want to talk about several of the things you mentioned, particularly in that one. And then I want to get to your podcast and just kind of you as a person, some background. Yeah. We don't know each other that well. We've spoken a couple of times, but they've been really fun conversations. Yeah, so. yeah. No, you're you're a cool guy. Like, I like talking to you, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I like, think with the whole Duncan episode, I mean, <laughs> you bo you and Duncan are on the certain wavelength and especially like the way that you two met. And I thought, and also you two are both like intelligent individuals, you know? So I think at first I was a little bit intimidated because of the whole <laughs> ideologies and kind of like the terms that you use that I am not familiar with, not that I'm not interested right. in it. And I found it quite right. interesting, but I do not know like all of the terminology, you know? Right. And I think, I think that's awesome though, that you don't need to know the terminology. And I think that's why I really liked what you were talking about in this this episode that you did for Artist Decoded, because you were mentioning things like 
valuing time. You know, you're talking about time being a commodity. And this is something I've mentioned on this podcast. I recently created a lot more time for myself professionally. And the way I did that was by raising my hourly rate and also mm. just taking on more value-based projects. So I'm not doing things that I don't want to be doing, number one, but also valuing my time a little bit more financially. Yeah. Um, but the funny thing that happened is, and, and we're talking, this is related to this time versus money thing. Like a lot of people work really hard for money and they're using their time to get it. That's kind of the value. Exactly. Equation. And that's kind of a, in my estimation, a losing game, right? Like money is a, I have a very smart friend who uh, I work with on a lot of stuff. And he once said something to me that was, I thought, brilliant. He's like, money is a replenishable resource. There's, they're printing literally more of it every day. There's yeah. more and more, like, don't worry. Money is a replenishable resource. Exactly. Time, time, time isn't. isn't. Yeah. Um, so, but I wanted to add another wrinkle to this, which I discovered with the time versus money thing is once I created all this more time and space for myself, I had to figure out this third variable, which to me I'm labeling as focus, like where I then wanted to put my energy once I created all of this time. Because like suddenly I have three times as much time. Because but of the you at the same time are doing it because of, you. I mean, you're having a kid yes. coming yes. up, right? So you have yes. to value yes. your time more and you have to figure out exactly like how you're going to be spending your time and Right. That's right. I mean, that was a huge part of it is I didn't want one of the things I try to carry throughout my life, including my career, is this concept of spaciousness. Um, when people or me in particular, but a lot of people, when they feel like they're constantly bumping up against either a deadline or something they need to do or there's not enough hours in the day, it creates a very frenzied state of mind. And I don't think it's very productive for most people if at all. Yeah. So when and this is a big a concept of stress. Of, Exactly. This yeah. is a huge concept of meditation. Why a lot of people do insight meditation, mindfulness meditation is you become aware that there is more spaciousness in any given moment um, than you might have thought. Because most people, when they think about their thoughts or who they are, they engage with them as though they are facts of life. These are real things that have to happen. And once you kind of solidify yeah. around those concepts, whether it's the self or an imposed deadline or things you need to do, I need to make money or I need to do this. It, it kind of traps you and constricts, I think, creativity in a lot of ways too, which I think is exactly. the essence of leading um, a meaning and fulfilling life, regardless of whether you're an artist. So I'd love for you to, does that, you know, this concept of spaciousness to me is, is just such an important thing. Do yeah. you come across that? Spaciousness? Yes, yes. Um, well, I think, I mean, in terms of what you're talking about with spaciousness, I think it's, and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, you know, if you value your time and you're valuing exactly like how you're going to be spending your time and you figure out exactly how, like what's important, what's not important, you know, what means you should take, what means you shouldn't, what, you know what I mean? And you're, and there's a consciousness to play within that. So I mean, am I getting at something kind of kind of like something yeah. that you're talking about? What I'm talking about, yeah, the concept of spaciousness I'm referring to is not having like a stressed out mind, not feeling hurried, being able to allow things to come and proliferate. I imagine as an artist, um, you have to come across this. Like when yeah. you're forcing, it's like the equivalent to writer's block, right? There's a couple of ways people will get through writer's block or creative block, whatever you want to call it. And some people will just plow through it. You know, like, mm -hmm. I'm going to just get through this. I'm going to do a bunch of stuff and see what comes out. And I think that's very valid. But sometimes... But then you're not as conscious about exactly what the point of everything is. But I think, right. I, I think there, there's a reason why people have, like, five-year plans and 10-year plans. And I mm -hmm. think if you want to get to any certain place, you need to have some sort of conscious state of mind to how exactly you're going to be getting there. So mm -hmm. you have to figure out what will get me to that eventual goal. And I don't think it necessarily has to be that methodical. It could be, um, I mean, it could just be like something that resonates with you. And then, you know, you like you pick and choose what projects, like for instance, you know, for me now, like I want to spend my time having these conversations with people because, you know, first of all, it's, it's an interesting way to like essentially mentor myself through all these artists that I really respect. <laughs> it's a way for me to be a curator to these artists that I respect, to establish relationships, to also add value to other people's lives that 
listen to the podcast. But I think it all kind of boils down to like similar ideologies that, oh wait, did something just happen? No, it's just a little clipping. It's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it just boils down to these, you know, similar ideologies that I kind of ensue within my own life. Yeah. Things so, that I value, you know. Well, this is this is something else. I was reading the bio you put uh, for Artist Decoded, which is awesome. And I'm actually going to put that in this episode. Um, you know, I'm going to copy the text because I cool, thought it was man. really important. I broke, I broke it down into different sentences, even though it was one paragraph. Yeah. Um, and that I that love- thing, honestly, it, it, it just... Like, you know, sometimes you spend so much time writing something, yes. but that it just kind of like came to me in like five or 10 minutes just because like <laughs> I, I, I truly believed in the reason why I was doing the program in the first place or the podcast. And I don't know, it just like once there's synergy in your life and once you have this sort of like everything just kind of fits into place and you, but yes. you intentionally make it fit into place. That's right. Then it just, I don't know, everything just makes sense, you know? A lot of us try to like go up this uphill battle all the time. And it's just like you're constantly like crawling up the hill. But which I don't think is it's not bad to like want to go somewhere and then understand where you want to go. But if you're just crawling up the hill because you think it's where you need to go, but it's not really where you need to go and it's you're going against the grain, then that's bad, too. Mm. You know what it reminds me of? It, it's like the concept of water, right? Like if you create um, like an aqueduct or some, you know, way for water to flow. If you create that, then when you just put the water in, it's going to flow naturally. And to get it to flow upstream, like you have to create all these propulsion things and things that would have to exactly. move it up. And and that's going to be a lot more work rather than just kind of getting into the flow, you know, the zone or whatever you want to call it, the creative flow, which is, I, I really want to get into the process of creativity with you because I'm, I'm very impressed um, with everything I've come across from yours, from your photography to, did you do that music video on the Vimeo? Um, Which one? On your Vimeo. Jarrell? It was, it was, yes. Jarrell Perry? Yes, yeah. yes. Holy Yeah, that was actually shit. my first music video that I've ever Dude. done. Oh my God. It was, first of all, the song is really very excellent. Um, yeah, and, Jarrell is awesome, man. Oh yeah. man, it was, I'll, I'll have a link to that. I'll embed it in this page too for this episode because it's just really fucking awesome. Also, I have not seen any of those visual techniques used in that way before. And it just, Thanks, man. It re- yeah, really, really awesome stuff. Um, well, I think the thing, that, with, oh, yeah. go on. No, 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 you go, you go. Oh no, I was going to say the thing with creativity and then kind of coming up with ideas too. Everyone encounters, you know, there, there's this thing with originality that people have this argument with that. I mean, there's even uh, this this TED Talks on originality and it's talking about kind of like how originality is broken down. And um, but I mean, for me, it's like all these accumulations of different experiences and different people you meet that might, you know, you might not realize it at the time, but it might um, steer you in a certain way and you can either accept it or reject it. But I think, you know, for me, a lot of it is just trying to, um, how do I describe this? Trying to just trust my instinct that I will do the right thing for each right project. And before, like, it, it took me a long time to do, to come to that realization because I've been shooting mm. for about nine years now. Wow. And I started when I'm 20, I'm 29 now. And wow. yeah, so... So is there an element, because the creative process for me, it's such an interesting thing, you know, making music, uh, there's there's always an element of trying to be some, what I consider kind of a conduit. Here, my theory of creativity is yeah. this. I think we, there's this other place that we can't perceive with our physical senses, um, but where creativity emanates from. Um, in Tibetan Buddhism, this is this is called, I think, the Sambo, Sambo Gakaya. Sambokaya. Um, and essentially, this is another concept from Carl Jung, which is archetypes. So there's this place, this realm. You can imagine it is imaginary, but it's this realm. And I believe it actually exists where people who are doing creative works, musicians, artists, photographers, um, really any creative aspect, they have kind of like a psychic link to. And the more you can kind of be in that flow state that you're talking about, the more you kind of open up to it and you yeah. can pull and, and re and 
interact with these things and then kind of synthesize it into whatever that extension is in this reality. It's like dimensionally pulling back things exactly. um, from this other place. And it's something that I've noticed in creativity, but also what comes along with that as we filter it through our kind of limited sense of self and our ego is fear, right? There's a sense of fear with creativity because it's this stuff that doesn't actually tangibly yeah. exist that you have to bring into the world. So, But there's something you, exciting it, about fear too. Yes, very, very, right? I mean- it's the a, the challenge the challenge behind creating something new is uh, has always been really exciting to me. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Me too, man. It's it's a fascinating thing. Um, it's also just I, there's there's few things in life I feel like for me that are as rewarding as creating something that didn't exist before and then having it like well received. You know, yeah. and, and not like a popular. Oh, I feel good. I mean, oh, everyone feels good when they create something. People like it, but like <laughs> yeah. you're. You, you ho another thing about what I've heard from you and in our conversations is you're very honed in on two ideas I love, which is creating value for people. Like you yeah. want things like, and then serving people. Like, well, yeah, you know, I want, I want other people to, well, not just the listeners of the podcast and stuff like that, but also I feel like, I mean, yes, obviously I want to create value for other people, but it's also, I feel like with doing the podcast and having these interviews with people that I admire we're creating value in each other's lives. And then I introduce them to people that I think that they would mesh with. And they introduce me to people that they think right. that would be good on the podcast. And then there's this sort of, I, there's this just sense of synergy with it all. And it, it just makes sense. It's like the way that I look at things is that you can't be a creative person or you can't just be any person just like on your own Island. Mm. You can't mm. create things without other people there. Ha you have to have other people like-minded people to create something beautiful and you have to accept that you know i mean and plus i'm not i don't like to be as selfish of a person to just want things for myself i want to create these win-win scenarios for other people yes and then it's like dude fuck yeah you got that music video that's fucking awesome man like you know i mean and just be happy for other people man you know well see what you're you're talking about is known in buddhism as sympathetic joy um, I think in Sanskrit or is it Pali? I don't know. It's called mudita. And it's basically the capacity when some like this, just so you're clear, I know what type of person you are, but recognize there are other people when a friend gets promoted or they have something great happen in their life, they go, no, oh, fucking man, wait, man, why did they get in that? Like that is a yeah. common mental state for a lot of people. Um, I have typically not been one of those people, but I know at the past I've had those thoughts pop up, you know, well, I think they're all human thoughts. They're human but it's thoughts. either if you accept it or reject it into your own reality is one thing, right? Yes, very much so. And I think what you've probably keyed in on, and this is just, it's fundamentally different than kind of how our culture and society and world is structured. Most people think this is a yeah. zero sum game and that they're exactly. operating from they're operating from a scarcity model, right? There's not enough to go around, so I have to control of mu as much of it as possible because mm -hmm. if I'm winning, if you're if you're winning, then I'm losing. When in reality, like just looking at natural resources around the world, the fact is there's enough food for everyone on the world. There's enough water for everyone on the world. Exactly. Maybe in 50 years with population increase, maybe there's eventually not, but right now there certainly is. It's logistically and the way we've separated kind of nations and countries and thoughts and systems that prevent it from happening, which to me is a great kind of macrocosm of the idea of how we separate ourselves from other people, right? Like we put up these fake boundaries and walls that don't necessarily reflect what the real situation is, which is you can succeed, I can succeed. And if we team up, we can actually succeed to a whole nother level. And I think- exactly. I love it. I love that. I mean, you listen, I only heard three episodes of your show. Um, which and, ones? I'm just uh, I heard Michael Donovan's. Cool. Um, I heard, uh, what is the, it was the artist, Michael had him on. He does like the weird bodies. Chadwick? Uh, no, no. Um, oh, Asger. So yes, yes. Asger yes, Carlson. Yes, I, yes. He was a tough interview, uh, but he was good. Yeah. I, I mean, and I could, and I could see um, kind of how you were creating a space to talk about things that were actually meaningful and important. Some related to the creative process and their art in particular, but some just about being human and kind of yeah. peeling back those layers. And I heard you reference another one where you were talking about, I forget who brought it up to you, um, but you were talking about clarity and how clarity was such a That's Alex Konevsky. 
Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and he's that, a very, I, very well respected painter. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and it, like I said, like when we spoke, I don't know a ton of the people who have been on your podcast, but the conversations that were coming out of it were awesome. <laughs> like they were really great. And that to me, that is the essence of why I'm loving podcasting as a medium, but also for the same reasons I think you've noticed that you get to connect with people in a way by virtue of this medium um, that kind of transcends yeah. boundri- boundaries very easily because of the free form. So I, I fucking love that. So yeah, it's, it's interesting to, I mean, because like generally I like to have these conversations with people on a daily basis in general, but I feel like a lot of the times, especially when you live in like a bigger city, it's hard to have these conversations with just the random person that you meet. Um, yes. And I think a lot of it has to do with a lack of vulnerability, but also, you know, everyone, yeah, we, we tend to build these boundaries between mm. us and other people. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, I guess it's well, hard to break that if you just meet someone on the street. But then when you do and, and you talk and you sit there for an hour and there's something beautiful within that and the, this, this connection and this sort of like meeting of the spirits. It's Yes, yes. It's alchemy is what I like to call it. It's this, chem- this reaction that happens when two substances or essences are come in contact with each other. That's the alchemy of relationship. Um, but I think it's a fascinating thing. I think ultimately those boundaries, like – just to be clear, in my experience, have you done psychedelics? Have you done like mushrooms? Yeah, of course. LSD? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I, we'll I recently did. I recently did. Uh, fuck. Well, it wasn't technically LSD, but I was in Amsterdam, and they have this sort of like quote unquote LSD um, thing that you can buy in the store. But it's it's basically <laughs> like it felt like shrooms, but just clean. You know, like you know when yeah. you do shrooms, and then it's like all like in your stomach, and it's all. Like yeah, you and, kind of have to go to the bathroom maybe, and then like, yeah. and there's there's nothing worse than taking a shit while you're on mushrooms. Yeah, you're like <laughs> you're, like you feel like your intestines are leaving yeah. your body. <laughs> you're like, is this something? I how did I not notice how insane this was at all time? Guys? Like, <laughs> I remember in college I did shrooms, and I was sitting there, yeah, and I was like on the toilet. I looked down, and there was just the there was like the little the little uh, like bath rug, right? The yeah, little, yeah, little yeah. Carpet. Yo, God, those was it fuzzy? It was fuzzy. Yeah, oh, I know. And it was it was green, I think. <laughs> and I looked into it and I imagined myself in there like as a little person <laughs> surrounded by this sort of vast green like forest yeah. and the, and I felt like it was like moving and I just you know you just like imagine yourself in a place and then I don't know it, it's it's hard to describe. But you know you know what I mean cuz I know exactly what shrooms. you mean. So the reason I brought up psychedelics is because one of the lessons I got from doing them pretty early on is that this sense of self that we carry around with each, you know, every day, like I'm Noah, I'm Yoshina, I'm, I'm this, I'm this person, I am this, I do this in life, I'm married, I have this, I have a kid now, I have, I go to school, I do this. Those things are really not as fixed as we would like them to believe. There are That's these true. constant moving, shifting emotions, patterns, thoughts that we kind of coalesce around this sense of self that we think exists. But then when you start doing psychedelics, that kind of shatters. And then you're kind of like, oh, like I'm still there. I'm still aware. There's still something here. But these roles and things I've put onto myself maybe aren't as real as I thought, which is why I'm always thrilled to have these types of conversations where we talk about these things. Because I think my general, like we talked about, you know, some of the, the value and kind of service for la- really, that's what you're doing by getting artists together, speaking about things, common shared experiences, the creative process, just inspiring in its own right. Um, mine is to, for this podcast at least, to touch on concepts of reality that otherwise wouldn't be spoken about, you know, that exactly. maybe we all kind of get glimpses of this here and there. And the reason is, is I think if we get this type of stuff out there, people who maybe have had experience, I've had this happen, I've had people write in where they're like, hey, like this crazy thing happened to me and I heard you talk about something similar and I was like, I didn't know anyone else actually had that happen. Mm. Um, and those Yeah, types of it makes things, you feel like yeah. there's other people out there. It's just, it, there's nothing worse than feeling like you're the only one or if you feel like you're alone in the world. Yeah, it's true. It really As is. much as people may be guarded about that and, you know, talk themselves into believing that, oh no, it's okay if, you know, I'm the only one that does this or that. But I think, you know, once you actually find people that are 
similar and you can relate to, there's nothing more beautiful than that. I I couldn't agree more. I think there's also, I'd like to make the distinction between solitude and being alone. Because I think there are, and I'm sure most artists would 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 agree with this, yeah. When you're a, when you're by yourself, you can really get some incredible things to to just you know come forth. You know, being alone, making time for your space to think. But then that in balance with having a community of like minded people, like that's where the real kind of I don't power. I don't know if I want to use that word, but that's where like the real magic starts to happen. Like being able to be alone and be okay with that, but then also be able to congregate and have shared experiences with yeah. people. Um, Cause there is a dark side to being alone. Like you can get depressed, you can feel isolated and those yeah, aren't a balance there. That's not what I'm talking about, but like everything in life, right? Exactly. There's a balance. So uh, going yeah. back to the, I just want to go back to, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. I, I'm just, yeah, yeah, cur- yeah. I'm just curious. What uh, do you know what your personality type is? Uh, what the like Myers the, Briggs, the Briggs Meyer. Um, I, I don't, I know, and the personality types, those were actually based off the Jungian. Um, he has a personality type thing. And I think oh, I'm, interesting. And, and I'm, in, I'm an intuitive feeler, I think, on his chart that they developed that off of. Are you I an forget introvert exactly. or an extrovert? See, this is, a great, this is a great thing. I think, this is my own classification, I think I'm an extroverted introvert, right? I think my natural state is being very introspective. Like I'm a homebody. Like I'm always accused by my wife and my friends. Like you don't. You always want people to come to you to your house. I like my home base. I kind yeah. of want to here. I want. Well, it's comfortable. But it's comfortable, right? And it also, I just, it's a sense of security. I'm sure it has something to do with my zodiac sign. Who knows? But I also, I love talking to people, and I really love meeting people, and I'm okay talking to people. I don't get like shy, you know. So I yeah. think that's what I am. What What are you? I'm an extrovert. <laughs> I'm an extrovert, but you know, I think I was a lot more extroverted in my early 20s and then as I started getting more introspective, uh, you know, in my late 20s, now I'm a lot more introverted, so I'm a little bit of both now, yeah. but I'm yeah. definitely more extroverted. I mean, in social situations, I don't know, I adapt really easily and I talk to everyone and I'm able to, you know, it just and Pumped I feel excited to like be in the party, you know, totally, totally. not that I'm a party I, animal or anything, but you know, I just, I, 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 I thrive off it sometimes, you know, I, I absolutely get it, man. I think, uh, so not, not to shift gears too abruptly, but I did want to talk about the, um, your bio for artist decoded. Cause oh, like yeah, I yeah. said, I, I pulled these out in parts and I just want to go through each one and maybe you could give me a little you know, yeah, 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 of course, this, whatever, man. It was super cool. So like, cool. you say it's a series dedicated to breaking down the barriers we tend to set up in our own mind. And I love this because yes, it's a show where artists are talking to each other and you could be talking about the artistic barriers and God knows what, but that actually applies to anyone and everyone. Like that is really a very altruistic yeah. kind of approach. So what inspired you? And you're very clear with your intent in this this biography or this, you know, about, like, it's very clear. That's why I think it probably flowed so easily for you is because the clarity and focus was there. And when you get it, you get it and you know, yep, this is what it is. This is what it is. So yep. what, what interests you about breaking down the barriers, um, that we set up in our own minds? Well, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of times we have these barriers and we have these boundaries of like what is possible and what's impossible, right? But I think if you stay in that box, then you're only going to go so far. But if you step out into the un- unknown, into the un- uh, quote unquote impossible and mm-hmm. try to explore that and you can, you probably come to a different conclusion that you probably wouldn't think is possible in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I think, you know, I mean, anything, I feel like anything is possible if you put your mind to it. I mean, uh, I remember, I mean, just to give an example, but when I was in high school, I joined uh, football senior year and I was like a lot scrawnier than I am now. Not that I'm like not (laughs) scrawny, but, (laughs) but like I'm, I'm like 160 pounds now. I was probably like 140 then. And dude, I got, I was just like basically abused by what these position? guys what position were you playing i was a corner um oh. cornerback but um but yeah no i got hazed by these guys and then you know like and it really kind of like 
psychologically kind of fucked me up for yeah, a bit. Sure. Um, and then so when I hit my 20s, I got into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I've been doing hey. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu ever since. And then now I like do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and boxing and kickboxing and but and I've competed in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But I think where I'm going with that is that, you know, I could have let that affect me and then kind of, you know, brought that into my subconscious or my conscious mm. state. But instead, I was like, fuck that. I'm not going to let this fear overcome me. I'm going to actually fight it head on and like li- literally fight it. And then mm. I learned from it. And now I have like, not that I didn't have confidence before, but I definitely didn't have confidence with, you know, how my ability to fight. Mm. This know? is this is fascinating to me because I've spoken to a couple other people on this podcast or was it just on the podcast? It was just my friend Ben and he started um, a gym in Oakland called Guardian Gym, which is primarily jujitsu. Oh, cool. Um, and it's it's I'll super, go check him out. Oh, dude, it's super cool. It's basically he is bringing martial arts to inner city kids for free um, because wow. he, the lessons he learned, which sounds very similar to what you learn, um, is this uh, kind of confidence, but also this equanimity, this balancedness that comes from learning a martial art. Myself, my only experience uh, with martial arts is I took a jujitsu class at like a local place when I was, I don't know, it must have been like middle school or high school. I went to one class. I couldn't get the gi on. You know? <laughs> it was like a pain in the butt. I got flipped by like a little girl. I was like, I'm good, I'm good with this. You gotta watch those little girls, fight. those experienced yeah. little girls, man. They'll <laughs> yeah, choke you they're... out. Choked you out, flipping, flipping me over their backs like no problem. Yeah. Uh, don't don't I, feel bad though, man. No, I, mean, I don't. I, I, I don't. At no, all. There, there's many. There's trust me. There's many stories of like big burly dudes coming into the gym, and then they, you know they go against this like purple belt, you know, hundred twenty pound girl, and just get <laughs> destroyed. Totally, you of know, course, of course. I. It's interesting because I've never been a huge martial arts person like i've never had a desire to necessarily learn but what i'm seeing people get out of it to me was counterintuitive because when i look at it's a little different than boxing of course but when i look at sports or even like mma like i look at it i look at mma and i'm like this is brutal like these people are bashing their head people's heads in like i get it's very primal it's primal and also, I have to reconcile this. You mentioned football. I'm a huge football fan. Like it is my preferred sport of choice. I've been a lifelong Miami Dolphins fan, which has been its own special sort of torture. Um, but, <laughs> you know, I love it. But I also recognize like these guys are bashing their fucking brains in for my entertainment. Oh, yeah. And this is like gladiators of the old day. So it's not like I'm trying to get on a high horse, but I've never really totally got the martial arts thing. But what I've seen come out yeah. of people I've spoken to who are really into it and heard people who are really into it and spoken about it there is this, it's not really about the fighting. It's not really being about being able to kick someone's ass. What it's about is instilling these inner qualities and having your physical ability be a reflection of that less than like, I'm going to learn jujitsu so I can go kick anyone's ass. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's fascinating. No, 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 exactly. Yeah. It's more so about the, the confidence building. And also, I mean, I feel like, and I'm kind of making a generalization, but I feel like a lot of people get into gangs and get into, well, first of all, with gangs, it's, I think it's a lot about, um, I mean, there, you know, there's like a trouble pass with that and everything, but I think it's because people don't have the sort of confidence within themselves to mm-hmm. be able to conquer things. You know, it's, yeah. it's that it's, yeah. it, it's based a lot on, on fear. So, I mean, I think it so, could go both ways. It could be like, you could look at it and martial arts, like as a violence sort of thing, or you can look at it as just this kind of thing to help you build self-confidence and to also, mm. I don't know how to describe it. There's just this feeling that that I get with it that, I mean, for, like for me, I'm not really into sports per se, but mm. I love fighting sports. Like combat mm. sports, man, I love combat sports. So, so I interesting. I, and I don't think it's, I think I was far too black and white about martial arts for a large period of my life. And then I started meeting more people who did them and it kind of changed my views on it. Yeah. But I think what I like how you're weaving it in is <clears throat> not kind of boxing yourself in or, or structuring limiting beliefs. And I think a lot of people, everyone, myself included, everyone has some element of limiting 
themselves and whatever. And I think part of our goal in life is to recognize what those things are. So you have to develop awareness of your blind spots and then try to yeah. work through them and realize where maybe you need help from other people to compensate for. I mean, this is this is something that can transcend not just personal development, but professional development. Like I got much more effective in my career when I started realizing here are my limitations, here's where I can bring people in to compensate for those. And now collectively oh, we can get something mean. much more effective. But I think in the same way you can do that for people, right? Like you want to be aware of where you need help along the way. And I think, again, I want to mm -hmm. tie this back to your podcast. So what the genesis of what you started with artist decoded um, and I know it's all here, like you talked about making dreams a reality and not letting them fall by the wayside. Yeah. And then also, um, giving people a sense of real human connection. So like, talk about what was the spark that made you be like, all right, I want to do this. This is something that I think is going to be a benefit. How, where did that come? What was the genesis of that? Well, <clears throat> it's interesting that you say that and you ask that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, well, let's see, I started about nine months ago. And during that time period, I felt like I was in this sort of creative rut and I mm. felt like I was kind of becoming a caricature of myself and I wasn't, the intent of what I was doing, like how I was doing photography in the beginning got lost because I started thinking of things more in terms of like making money and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. although I didn't maybe I didn't say that to myself or I didn't say it out loud, but I was thinking about that. You know, I was worrying a lot about sure. how am I going to make money doing this? Or like, I need to make money, so I need to do it this way. And I felt like that went against um, the reason why I started doing it. You know, like you, you start doing some sort of creative thing because you know and even as a career because you want to have fun doing it i mean simply put mm. and so the reason why i started it is because i've always believed in mentorship and i've had mm. like one or two part-time mentors in my life but i really wanted to go out and kind of understand why people came to the conclusions that they've come to you know mm. through with their artistic crafts Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I wanted to ask because there's a lot of the people, like pretty much everyone, well, yeah, everyone that I bring onto the show, I, I admire in, in some way, mm -hmm. whether it be their ideologies or whether it be um, their visual aesthetic or their narrative aesthetic or what have you. But yeah, I just wanted to explore that. I want to explore <laughs> through conversation. And I like having conversations with people. It's very natural for me to just have a conversation yes. and I mean, everyone kind of wants to be liked in a way. I mean, not, maybe, maybe not everyone, but you know, I, I feel good to be I liked by other people. I think know? everyone, I don't know, unless there's some weird psychological thing. I think most people, I mean, that's a very basic to even extend it past. Like everyone wants to be loved and they want to love. I think that is just a natural human quality. Um, there's always exceptions, there's sociopaths, but I really think for yeah. the vast majority of us, everyone listening, you and me, that's just kind of a natural yeah. uh, thing that people want. And I think, but what's funny to me is this is, like I said, I come across a lot of spiritual people who do hardcore spiritual practices and they've been doing this, they're doing maybe mantras or maybe they're doing meditation or maybe they're doing this and that and the other thing. Yeah. And then I come across someone like you. Or I come across someone like Michael and I come across a lot of different people and I can see that you are intuitively and naturally grasping these concepts like gratitude, clarity, focus, diligence, all of these things. Like these uh -huh. are lofty things that I've seen people who have been studying these things, intellectualizing these things for decades, still completely unable to grasp. So that's why, that's mm. why. I, I do, you, was, do, you, do, you, do you think it's I because. Was so, yeah. Oh, you're gone. No, I would. That's why I was laughing when you called last night, and you're like, "I don't know if I'm like, I'm like, dude, like I, I even just the brief conversations we had, like I know, like you're on the right path. You're doing things. You have a whole podcast that's dedicated to helping people. That's really what it is. Yeah, like yourself included. Don't forget yourself, but like it, it really is dedicated to helping you and others. Um, yeah, it makes thought, me, it makes you feel really happy when people. And I try to, you know, email everyone back that emails me. Um, you know. If I, if I can't get it, get to it at that time, then I 
set aside and I put it, you know, section off in a folder and then come yeah. back to it when I can. But so, you know, like I like to email with people and really go in depth on the emails. Man, some sometimes it's like a couple pages long. Yeah, know? yeah, totally, totally. But, um, <laughs> you know, that and on the Instagram feed and uh, the Instagram, like direct messages and stuff, I definitely like to reply to everyone just because it, it makes me feel good that I'm like adding some sort of value to someone's life. And, you know, I didn't really get that. I felt like with my photography, because it's, mm. it's with photography, it, it, to me, it was like so one-sided and I, but I feel like the reason why too, is because the way I approach photography was not so much from a truly connected point of view. It was more of like in the beginning, you know, you're learning and you're kind of mimicking what other people do. But mm. now I feel like I have such a strong sort of point of view in my own life mm. that now as I'm shooting more, you know, especially recently, that there's a lot of these sort of ideologies that I've ensued within my own life that I am kind of talking about. And I feel like mm. I'm talking about more things through my photography than I ever have been. And I feel like, you know, it's an ongoing process and it'll, it'll keep on evolving itself. And maybe some will be more aesthetic pieces where it's just about what it looks like, or maybe it's this deeper meaning and like a docu-series or, or what have you. But yes. I just feel like now I'm just so much more comfortable in my own skin. Mm, and that's when the magic really does start to happen. I mean, it's interesting. You change your personal point of view and that actually is or changes your photography point of view, like yeah. no pun intended. It's really an interesting thing. This to me is the crux of, I think, what I, I, you know, I think everyone wants to be happier. Everyone wants to be more fulfilled. Everyone wants to feel uh, a sense of, you know, I'm doing the right thing and I'm really helping myself and other people. Um, and I think one of the funny things um, yeah. that actually really helps to get people to those realizations is working on yourself. It seems counterintuitive because yeah. a lot of people, when they look out into the world and they see tons of fucked up shit, also great stuff, but tons of fucked up shit, they can be like, oh man, like I got to go out there and help immediately. Like that's the first thing that I need to do. Look at all this suffering and I got to help yeah. right away. But sometimes that's counterproductive because if you're bringing all of your shit with you into a situation, like just a, a quick example, like think if you're helping with like a domestic uh, violence situation, you go yeah. and want to help and talk to women who have been abused. Um, but let's say you have some thing in you that you're fucked up about. And so your advice or your surrounding them isn't actually helping. It's just kind of adding to this sense of confusion. It's far more effective to work on yourself to get as much. Exactly. We're not, yeah. Yeah. I think and that's, true happiness yeah. just comes from within. It is. Cause that's, there's no difference. The, the funny stuff with all of this is in my firm opinion at this point, uh, I don't think there's any difference between what's going on internally and what's going on externally. I think everything mm. we experience outside is a direct reflection of our individual and collective internal experiences. That's where I think culture emanates from. I think it's where art emanates from. It's where I think everything that we see and experience emanates from. And I think the really interesting thing is, is you look at, look at that from an esoteric or philosophical point of view, but even if you look at it from a scientific and empirical point of view, like look at quantum physics, like you don't have to be an expert in quantum physics, but know yeah. that when we get down to these teeny little levels, one one thousandth of an inch or smaller, shit does not work the way it does up here in big world. If you put yeah. something here, it affects a particle thousands of miles away. Yeah. You look at, you're looking for a, a particle, an actual thing, you see it. If you're looking for a wave of light, you'll see that. And the observer principle even comes in there. So exactly. I find that, you know, if we're trying to, to help in any way, the message is, is work on yourself, find things that inspire you, that make you curious, that help you. And I think you're now, you're experiencing the kind of the fruits of that, right? Yeah. You went through, you were at this kind of point where you were like questioning. And I've had these conversations with Michael, Michael Donovan, um, yeah, cool. about these very things because, you know, he was in the fashion world. He's still in the fashion world. He had his whole fuck the fashion world thing <laughs> for a long time. Yeah. But I think, a, I lot, think he, a lot of people get to that. Well, because you're it's very you're, one dimensional. You're doing, as someone who is intuitive and aware and open, you're kind of, you and him both, you're kind of going into the belly of the beast. You know what I mean? And this is such a weird thing in the creative um, 
outlets and industries, like same thing with the music industry, like musicians are some of like the most sensitive and, you know, regardless, they, they're intuitive. They feel things very deeply and that's how music is created. Exactly. But then if you get into the actual music industry, it's a fucking nightmare. I mean, it is a cutthroat, terrible place for the most part. Now it's changing a little bit because digital yeah. and people kind of go directly to their fans. But I mean, this is a middleman's industry if there's never been one. And it's hard, but so noble to be able to work in those industries and bring that perspective, which is, again, why I think your podcast and what you're doing is incredibly valuable. Yeah. Um, not Thanks, just man. for the quality. Yeah. It, truthfully, though, I mean, that's. That's why I was thrilled that Michael, Michael Donovan gets another hat tip for introducing us. He's <laughs> done it many times to cool people, but yeah, Mike, yeah dude. Michael's so, awesome, dude. He's really great. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I think, you know, understanding, you know, I've, I've had this battle with like the industry and the fashion industry and the music industry, and it's more of like an internal battle, but you can either let it overcome you or you can figure out a way to where you can get what you want from it, if that makes sense, you know? Because the way that I look at it, it's like, I want to surround myself with musicians that I love, like I love their music, I believe in what they do, and I just believe in, I, I believe in it. And like fashion, like, I don't want it to overcome me. You know, I, I, I do like fashion as much as I hate the politics of fashion mm -hmm. and sort of, um, <laughs> Yeah, I guess, you know, I, I I despise the politics of the fashion world, but yet I think there's something really interesting that can be created within fashion and using fashion and using fashion as a, an accessory mm -hmm. to convey a story. Mm -hmm. But you have to be able to exist in all these worlds and then cre and create your own world, you know? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I do know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Uh, That's why I love artists that are multi-dimensional like Larry Sultan for instance uh he's are you familiar with Larry Sultan at all no no he's a uh photographer and he had a retrospective at LACMA but the reason why I bring him up is that you know he is a photographer who can shoot big ad campaigns like he did something for Bottega Veneta which is a big fashion designer um and yet he can still exist and do his own artwork, you know, and I, and I feel like he's more respected for it because he's mm -hmm. not single-minded. Like I am a fashion photographer mm -hmm. because that's the, the approach that I had in the beginning in my mid twenties. I thought like, I am only a fashion photographer. I, me I remember I had a meeting with, um, Jed Root, who is like a, a, a I guess, a you know, relatively big, uh, photo rep. And I told him like, I only want to be a fashion photographer. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I think, I mean, you know, I, and I think that's just the wrong approach, at least for me, for some people that really yes, works. It might but, be their wheelhouse and that might be what is perfect for them. But exactly. I don't know. I, I think for real creatives, not that you're not, if you're only into one thing in any means, but drawing on a lot of different experiences in life makes your art and what you're doing far more rich. You have more to draw from. You have like I I'm this podcast is called Synchronicity and I also am I love that. I love that name. Oh, well so it's my one of my favorite uh <clears throat> it's it's a term that was actually coined by Carl Jung, one of my favorite thinkers, psychologists, philosophers. Just a totally fucking brilliant guy. Yeah, um of he calls it an a causal orderedness, which is basically like there's no, you know, if I tap this desk, it makes a sound. There's causation there. I know that this is vibrating, it's making a sound, but a synchronicity could be anything that seems connected in a way, but we can't find the causal relationship. So like you're thinking of someone in your head. Well, it's and then complex. They, like, Life it's is complex. very complex. And I personally am of the belief that everything at all times is one giant synchronicity. I think that is the, the, the fact of the reality that we live in. I think what well, prevents I think it, us- it should be. It should be. I think what because prevents I th us. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no. Well, I just think a lot of people compartmentalize their life too much. That's right. Where things can't be in, um, uh, can't be synchronized. Yes. I think that's absolutely right. And I think we also limit ourselves based on those perspectives we're coming from. Like, I'm also a huge believer that. Um, the more perspectives you can cultivate on a situation, you know, more of a 360 picture you can get. This is can be very useful during like disagreements or arguments. 
the more angles you can look at it from, which means your angle, maybe the person you're fighting with's angle, maybe um, you, you know, an objective observer, maybe you know the bird over there who's looking at this. <laughs> truthfully, like the more things uh, you can amazing. look at, the more complete yeah. of a picture you get of it, yeah, and then yeah. you realize like you're maybe not making decisions just from your limited perspective. Yeah, I think you can um, just have more empathy towards people. Empathy. It's another thing. Like, see, these are all these are things I would put in the spiritual category, but I don't love again i don't love that word because i think it kind of it has a stigma associated with it but it is of the spirit empathy is an incredibly important compassion is an incredibly important concept like these are things that demonstrate they make our lives better if you can live from those space places if you can be grateful as you talked about in one of the episodes i don't i do this i've had this on my phone i don't know why i have it but i have a reminder that goes off twice a day that just says gratitude it just says that's amazing. Gratitude. I love be, that. Be grateful. Like, you know what I mean? And it's like a, that second. And admittedly, sometimes it pops up and I'm doing something. I'm like, ah, I don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time for that shit. Yeah. Who has time for this, this gratitude shit? I'm doing something important here. Click, yeah. click, like. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it is. These are concepts that regardless of where you are and how you engage with any of this stuff, they're incredibly useful and more importantly, practical. Like this is shit that anyone can do. You don't have to know what me and Duncan were talking about to understand that these are things that can actually transform your lives, kind of shatter these limiting beliefs and help other people. Exactly. So, uh, okay, we're, we're at the, man, this flew by. This is awesome. We're going to have to do it again too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> definitely. definitely gonna have to. Yeah, uh, yeah I, totally I love serious. that, man. Um, but so I end every show uh, asking um, each guest, uh, for some practical tips or a tip that have helped them in their lives. Um, and it's purposely vague. So whatever that means to you, anything <laughs> that you think someone might benefit of that has helped you, that's kind of the idea behind it. <sighs> yeah. I mean, something that I've been trying to work on myself is to really listen to your, your inner child, but also listen to your instincts mm. and to really be honed in on the intention of like why you're doing something, what does it mean? And I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be that. Um, how do you describe it? Micromanaged. But mm. I think, you know, it is good to kind of take a step back, understanding why you're doing something and then going forward, instead of being on autopilot all the time and just kind of accepting life for what it is, not that you shouldn't you know, <laughs> live within the moment, because I think yes. we have to live in the, within the moment. We can't be too far um, caught up with the past, you know, and then having doubt because of things that you've done in the past. And you can't be looking too far into the future because then you're not focusing on the present, which right. affects your relationships with the people and with the conversations that you're having. And so being well-rounded, trusting your instincts and um, being grateful for what you have, because at any given moment that could just be gone, you know, like your best friend or whoever could just immediately like be out of your life and yeah. you just have to be grateful for what you have. Yeah. And it's, it, with the gratitude too, I mean, you just, you never know what's going to happen in life. You don't know what the change is and you don't want to be caught in a time where you didn't appreciate while you were doing those things and with the people and the stuff you like to be doing until it's gone away. Cause then it's a, it's a rougher transition. You know what I mean? It's not a smooth entryway for a lot of people. Exactly. Um, Awesome, man. Dude, this has been super duper fun. Yeah, um, thanks, man. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing it again. Also, it's just really been great. I know we've what we've known each other like less than a week now, but it's like really fun. We're <laughs> I friends, know, right? It's already super great. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's so, only been a week, huh? It's pretty nuts. It's interesting uh, how, you know, people meet like that and then just this beautiful meeting of the minds. I love that. I love it too. I mean, it. I think it plays into something else I heard you talk about. Uh, or I don't know if you spoke about this specifically, but time I don't think time is as fixed of a concept as we like to believe it is. I think that's why people who haven't met before um, and haven't necessarily known each other can connect so quickly. There's something else there, I think. I don't think it's necessarily limited and constrained by time. So um, awesome, man. Let's do this again. And thank Definitely. you for coming on. 
Thank you very much for having me on. Thanks. Hi, buddy. All right, cool. I'm going to clip it there. Yeah, man. Cool. Been a blast. Super cool. Went great. See, nothing to fear. Super fun. Easy. Yeah, yeah. No, def- definitely, man. If you can, I'd like to just do a little research. I mean, I know you mentioned Carl Jung and Ram Dass and just, just maybe a couple things that come off, you know, from your mind. And if you can email me that just so I can Absolutely. do my own research because I'm, I'm curious. Absolutely. I'll try yeah. to get you started. Um, admittedly, Carl Jung, I mean, there's a reason why everyone knows about Freud and not Jung. It's because yeah. Freud was very caught up with sex and kind oh, of yeah. a more sex materialist right. view of <laughs> reality. And Jung, basically, they, they, Jung studied under Freud and they split famously. And what basically happened is Freud basically had the point that um, everything that we can't filter in our conscious mind gets pushed to this place called the subconscious yeah. and the unconscious. And ah. we experience in our dreams. We, that's why we have these things about them. There's these complexes and blah, blah, blah. And it's really just us trying to express ourselves through the stuff we can't filter through. And Carl Jung was like, yeah, I hear you on that. But I think that might just be your personal subjective interpretation of what's going. And he basically yeah. has, I mean, unlimited concepts really, but he conceptualized this thing, which I think is the reality of the situation and lines up with almost everything you'll read thousands of years old, but this thing called the collective unconscious. And in the same way that you and I have our own individual subconscious, yeah. collectively we share, this is, this is where I think, again, this creative stuff comes from. This is where art comes from. It's this shared collective unconscious that we can tap into at any given time. Yeah. This is like, he noticed this, um, you know, he was a clinical psychologist and he noticed that um, people were having these precognitive dreams of these horrible wars, these horrible, horrible things that were taking place. And it was actually the beginning of World War II uh, or World War Whoa. I. And so That's he, crazy. it was insane. And like they were tapping in and like, you know, someone has a dream that someone died and they wake up and that person died. So I'll, I'll try to get you started on some Carl Jung stuff. I'll send you a list of stuff. Um, I think you might potentially yeah. like. S- send um, me a short list because I, I, I asked... <laughs> I ask people to send me lists sometimes and they send me like, the, I mean, you know, like a really long drawn out list and then I get overwhelmed. So if you just give me like two things to look at. I'll give you two. I'll give yeah. you two things. Give, two things. Yeah, yeah. Two, two things. And then I start from there. I'm a very much like, I, you know, like I need it like dose, like small doses. And then I, and then I get really into something. Do you, uh, do you listen or read to any Alan Watts? I did. And um, I mean, not anything specific, just kind of like YouTube videos, because I got introduced through Alan Watts through um, watching a lot of Bruce Lee, uh, you know, like uh, right. little in- interviews of Bruce Lee. And I love his concept on water. And yes, um, I don't know. But also, you know, Bruce Lee, he's a great martial artist, but he also just a great philosophical mind. Oh, as well. one of the best. I mean, that's if there's someone who's an avatar for the fusion of martial arts and philosophy. And cultural he's... boundaries, too, because during oh. that time, I mean, he's this Chinese man that's like not really accepted, you know, within that culture from China, you know, and it's true. It, and it's, it's, it's really true. It's cool, man. I mean, to be able to have that voice and have that confidence against all odds. Yeah, man. And we're able to reflect it both physically, spiritually, and mentally. So fucking cool. Um, Yeah, man, I got you. I'll send you a couple things that I think you'll dig um, that are geared for your persuasion. Yeah, fuck yeah. Um, Cool, man. Awesome, man. Thanks again for doing it. I'll send you the file, probably clean this up tomorrow and send it to you tomorrow. Um, Oh, cool. When are you going to post, do you think? So I have one, two, probably not next week, probably the week after. So I just want to make sure that I that I can post at the same time that you post. Yeah, I mean, if there's a better time for you, I have like three recorded at this point that I'm planning on getting out next week. I have one in the backlog. Um, so whatever I works have, for you, basically. Yeah, I, I'll I'll send it to you and we'll coordinate. There's no no big deal either way. So cool. Oh, man. All right. Thanks All right, a lot man. for doing this. All right. Later, man. All right. Bye bye. All right. Bye.
backyard, pull up in your fast car, whistling my name. Open up a beer and you say get over here and play a video game.
it was a little Lana Del Rey thing I put together. I don't know, like four years, whenever that album came out, right around then, maybe a little after. I like that. It's cool. I like video games too. So, you know, it's cool. Uh, good episode with Yoshino, as promised. Um, I am, I have some other news that we'll be talking about, you know, relating to Yoshino coming forward. Um, so if you enjoyed the episode, stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, rate and review podcast if you want donate if you want if you're so inclined no big deal if not um and yeah i'll see you next week